Hello and welcome to the Ruby on Rails tutorial screencast series. My name is Michael Hartle and I'm the author of the Ruby on Rails tutorial book and I will be your host for this series. Before we even get started, I want to make sure that everybody knows that the entire text of the Ruby on Rails tutorial book is available online at railstutorial.org slash book. Of course, you're welcome to buy the PDF copy of the book or to buy the print edition, which is, as of this moment, available for pre-order and uh, might even be out by the time you watch this. But I wanted to make sure that the entire book was online so that anybody watching the screencast series could refer to it. Uh, books and screencasts have different strengths, and this way you get the best of both worlds. At this point, I'm going to assume that you don't know very much about Ruby on Rails web development. Uh, if you have some prior Rails experience, you might want to skip ahead in the tutorial at this point. But if you are new to Ruby on Rails web development, or web development generally, it's nice to get an overview of uh, what Rails is and what it can do. Ruby on Rails is a framework for making dynamic web applications. And we can get an idea of what that means by looking at some examples of sites written with Rails. Start with Shopify.com. Shopify is an online store builder written in Rails. Here's another example. Scribd is a document sharing and publishing website, also written in Rails. Here's a site you might have heard of. Twitter is written in Rails. Of course, the back end of Twitter has all kinds of engineering that has nothing to do with Rails uh, per se, but although they do use a lot of Ruby on the back end, but the web layer is written in Rails. There's one of my favorite sites. Hulu.com is written in Rails. And even some old school brands reinventing themselves online Oops, use Rails. Here's YP.com, which is the Yellow Pages. The Yellow Pages are running Rails. And finally, let's take a look at oops, 37, not 73, 37 signals.com. 37 Signals is the company that originally developed Rails as part of the Basecamp project. Basecamp is a project management web application originally developed by David Heinemeyer Hansen, who extracted Rails uh, as a framework from Basecamp development and uh, then released it as an open source project. And as you can see, now Rails powers lots of websites all over the web. As nice as it is to see some concrete examples of web applications written in Rails, as nice as it is to be convinced from examples that uh, Rails can actually make cool websites, um, there's simply no substitute for actually doing it yourself. And that's what this tutorial is all about. This, this tutorial is a hands-on introduction to Ruby on Rails, where you'll get to learn Rails by example through the development of uh, three separate applications. Uh, we'll start with the first app in this chapter, uh, or this lesson, I should say, which is based on chapter one from the book. Uh, then we'll make a demonstration application or demo app uh, that will show off some of the basic features of Rails. And then we'll move on to the sample application or sample app. And that will be a full industrial strength web application. It will be a small application. It's going to be uh, based on a minimalist uh, Twitter design, which is just about the smallest uh, web application that uh, we can make that's also useful. But it will be a real application. Um, I'm not going to pull any punches with the sample app. But in this chapter, we're going to, st uh, we're going to work on the first app, which is just something to get us started. At this point, I'm going to assume that you've already installed Rails. If you haven't, then you should go to one of the installation screencasts and, uh, and come back after you've installed it. Um, I should mention also that things don't always just work when you install Ruby and Rails and all of the associated software. Um, so I definitely encourage you to Google the error message. That is the universal algorithm for debugging things in, in the Ruby on Rails web development, and indeed in, in life. Okay, so once you've gotten Rails installed, uh, then uh, setting up the first application is easy. We can start by making a directory for our Rails projects and then change directories to that directory. And now I'm going to make the, the first application using the Rails script that comes with, uh, with Ruby on Rails. So it's Rails. To make a new application, we type new and then the name of the application. This syntax, by the way, is new in Rails 3. In previous versions of Rails, you would just type Rails first app. And I'll mention in a couple of minutes why they made that change. 
there we go. It's, uh, the, the script is run, and you can see it created a bunch of files and directories. And this is one of the, the most useful things about Rails, actually. It, it seems kind of silly, but this was one of the first differentiators for Rails. This is what got one of the things that got people's attention, is that there was a standard directory structure. And it's, it's really nice because it means that you can orient yourself in a new Rails project right away. If you look at someone else's Rails project, you can pretty much tell where things, uh, where things go. So I'm going to open the current directory, open dot. This command will not work unless you're running OS X. And you can see here that we've got our first app. And let's take a look at it. So this is the application directory structure for every Rails application. So there's an application directory, the app directory. And then there are controllers, models, and views. You may have heard about the MVC, or model view controller pattern. We'll be covering that, especially in the, in the next lesson. There's a config directory. There's a log directory. We'll be covering uh, most of these uh, directories and uh, most of, indeed most of these files throughout the rest of the tutorial. Uh, but at this point, it's, it's nice just to get an overview of what the structure is. Uh, there, there is a lot to take in here. And you should know that eventually this, uh, this directory structure will be burned in your brain. And you won't, have to, uh, you won't have to think about it very much. But it can be overwhelming. I remember when I first learned Rails Web Development, I was just so confused about where does that file go? Where does this file go? So throughout the, especially the early lessons of this tutorial, I'll be emphasizing where everything lives. And then eventually, uh, later in the tutorial, I think it'll, it'll sink in. And at this point, let's navigate into our first app directory. At this point, we actually have a, a working Rails application, although we're not going to run it right away because there's one step we have to do uh, first. And this is the same with every Rails 3 application, which is to install all of the gems needed by the application. And th the list of those gems is in a file called the gem file. So let's list the current directory just to take a look. Here are some of the directories that uh, we just saw. And here's the gem file. So let's open it. I'm going to open it with my favorite editor, which is TextMate. You should use your favorite editor. And here it is. This is our very first Ruby file. This is actually a Ruby file. Uh, so the first Ruby file in this tutorial, it won't be our last. <laughs> um, this character here, this little hash character, or sometimes called the pound sign, is a, the Ruby comment character. So you can ignore everything that's commented out here. Let's just focus on these lines. This is a gem, Rails, and then the version of Rails, 3.0.0.rc. This says that uh, that Rails needs Rails to run. And this, uh, remember this RC here is release candidate. By the time you watch this, it might be a different version, uh, but uh, you shouldn't worry about that, especially since this version is actually just generated by the Rails new first app command we ran. So it'll be whatever the right version is, corresponding to the version of the Rails script you ran. Um, the other line here is the uh, SQL3, uh, SQLite 3 Ruby. So SQLite is a, a really nice lightweight database that um, is great for uh, use in development mode. Uh, it's not used for uh, any uh, production web applications that I know of, uh, although it is good for embedded devices. Uh, but it's so lightweight and easy to set up that it's the Rails default for development. Uh, this might just work for you, this SQLite 3 Ruby gem, but I need to install a particular version. So SQLite 3 Ruby is a, a gem that tells Ruby how to talk to SQLite databases. So I need version 1.2.5. Now, don't worry about this syntax here. We'll be covering what this means uh, later in the tutorial. At this point, let's just be satisfied with our complete gem file. And the next. Looking to advance your career by acquiring new skills? Tired of expensive off site training programs? Wish you could learn from the best instructors in the industry? Look no further than live lessons. Self paced personal video instruction by the world's leading technology publishers. Each live lesson comes with a DVD featuring three to four hours of instructor-led classroom training, sample program code that allows you to work along with your personal instructor, and an example-rich study guide. 
Live lessons allow you to watch the entire course from start to finish or navigate directly to any of the individual lessons. You'll literally watch over the shoulder of your instructor as he shows you how to build state-of-the-art applications. Live lessons, the power of the world's leading technology experts at your fingertips. To learn more, visit MyLiveLessons.com today.